Welcome back all, this is Daz from Modoro Techniques. Up this week I'm gonna show you how to turn a working ATX power supply into a some sort of, either a bench power supply or a power supply for your layout, which is basically gonna turn that spider web of cables into some sort of logical and working power supply for our model train. So that's enough of the waffle, let's get started. So let's talk about the, the, the components that we're gonna need. So first of all, you're gonna need a working ATX power supply, one of those for this build. Now I'm not gonna go through all the binding posts, but you're gonna need some sort of banana pug binding posts like these. You're gonna need probably at least four of those in different colors. Also, you're gonna need three fuse holders. We'll talk about fuses later, but the type of fuses that go into that, that holder You'll need some little lugs like this that will you put your wires into and you'll grip down onto the, the power strip here or the power terminal. You'll also need some LEDs to show the different, you'll need some LED, different two different color LEDs to show the different modes of the ATX power supply. And you'll need some reducing resistors. These are 1K versions, but that will be dictated by what type of LED you are using and the intensity and brightness you want of your said LEDs. Also, you need a on and off switch. Now this one here, I've already soldered up. It needs to be able to take, um, it's only five volts that's gonna be running through this, so you don't need anything real great. So this is a 12 volt, 20 amp switch that you can, that you can use for this project. Now we've got the components sorted out, let's get into it. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got the ATX power supply now. I've taken the lid off just to show you what the inside looks like now. It's, it's up to you what you, whether you want to do that or not. So one few things obviously you need to be very, very careful of, and I'm not going to touch any of this because I don't have the requisite skills to do this. Obviously you've got your, in my part of the world, the 240 volt input that comes into the back to, to power this little guy up. The other thing we need to be very mindful of, this, this, this power supply hasn't been powered up for a little bit, so there should be no issue with this one, but you've got these two rather large capacitors here, hold some current after the 240 volt or 120 volt, depending on what part of the world you're in, has been fed through the circuit board. Now, if you are to touch the bottom side of this, which is I haven't taken this, this, this circuit board off and I don't plan on doing it, all I've given it is just a little bit of a clean up with some, with some air just to get some of the dust out. So you will get a nasty little zap from that. Also, so you've got all the cables that come out here for all the requisite uh, peripherals for the computer. And we'll go through all those very shortly. What the colors are, what they all mean and what voltage they are. So it's just a matter of clipping these off, terminating the ones we don't need so we don't have any uh, shorting out issues. Um, so we'll get, uh, we'll get into that. So at this point, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be ruthless and just go through and cut all these connectors off because we don't need any of these. Obviously make sure when you're doing this, this, this little guy does not have any power coming to it. Goes without saying, but I'll just add that little disclaimer. And then what we're gonna do from here is we're actually then going to sort all the cables into their various colors and then we'll go through what voltages and ampages they are. All right, so we're going to look at the, the components and how this is all wired on this little display or presentation here. So these little donuts down the left-hand side, so they represent the, the different wires that are coming out of the ATX, and I'll go through what they are used for. So we've got, as it says, the black is the ground, orange is 3.3 positive volts, red is positive 5 volts, these are all DC and the yellow is positive 12 volts. Now the green here, so the green donut here is the power supply on, and we'll get to how that works in a sec. We've got the gray cable, so the gray cable here, or the gray donut, I should say. That is the power okay. And the little purpley pink donut down the bottom here is the the standby voltage, which is a positive volts DC. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is the ground connection. So you can see the ground connection will go to our, our on and off switch here. 
and it'll go all the way through to our ground on our output side. So these donuts here, I'll explain, these are our binding posts or our output side of the ATX. So we'll go three, the positive 3.3 volts, so now that goes to one side of the, the glass fuse there and also the output and then to the output of the 3.3 volts. All the other three voltages are the same, the 5 and the 12. Well, I'll now I'll explain. You'll see down here we've got a the 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor here that needs to be fed on a positive 5 volts. Now, what that is used for, some ATX power supplies also need to attach this small little load to the plus 5 volt rail to trick the power supply into thinking it's been connected to the motherboard. So that's what we're doing here. And then we'll get our 12 volt output to our 12 volt uh, binding post there. Now the green, this is how we turn the output side on and off, so via this green wire. So between the green and a, the ground, that's how we achieve that. So the grey wire here, going to this red LED, and then we need a dropping resistor of a um, 1K ohm resistor, I think, from memory. Then that's going to be very dependent on what type of LED you're using and what intensity you want it to have. So this grey wire here, which is a positive 5 volt, that illuminates the red LED, which in turn, that only will come on when we have turned this switch on. So then we've got the, the purple wire or the pinky wire down the bottom, you go into this yellow LED, and then obviously it needs its dropping resistor on the negative side. So the reason we have that is, is that will illuminate as soon as we turn on the 240 volts to the power supply. So that's a very, very quick schematic of what all the connections are. It does look a little bit daunting, but as we sort of work through a connection at a time, it's really, really not that difficult. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCBWay or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with 1 to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCB Way don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. Watch out for my upcoming videos where I'll be using some of their products. So just another thought on the resistor as well. Now, sorry, the this main 10 watt, 10 ohm resistor. Now, it's got a rather good heat sink on it, but my ATX power supply does give off a little bit of heat into this. So what I'm going to look at doing is I'm actually going to install the resistor onto the on the top of the case here. I will just tap some little screws in there. So just be mindful when you are screwing into this, you got your 240 volt goes without saying, or your mains power supply disconnected, and you pick up any metal shavings or anything that, that might be produced if you are going to drill into this. So what my thought is, not only we're going to use this as the heat sink with the, the flat side on the bottom here, also dissipate some heat into the ATX power supply cover. So what we've got here, we've got the, the actual rig set up properly. Now, off to the top of the, the screen up here is the actual ATX box. So I've already shown you that, so that's the boring part. So we don't really need to go any more into that. So I'm in two thoughts exactly what I'm going to do with this power supply, whether I'm going to use it underneath the layout to supply the, the 12, the 3.3 the and the 5. Now, so what I haven't done yet, I haven't actually wired what I'm going to call the output side of this. So if it's going to go underneath the layout, I'll just use some spade clips and I'll just set up some sort of bus and we'll, we'll go ahead with that. So currently we've got, now I'll turn the, so currently we've got the, the 240 volts. My part of the world, I'm in Australia, so the 240 volts coming into the back of the ATX. Now, as you can see, we've got the this wire here connected to the purple one. So that is the, the uh, plus five volts standby. So as we said before, that is only comes on when the 240 volt. So what we'll now do is we'll now switch the, the power supply on with the, the toggle switch here. 
now you can see this blue light has illuminated. So that's connected to the, the grey wire. So as we spoke of before, that only comes on when the power supply output, as I'm going to call it, is currently on. So there is currently voltage coming to this, this terminal block. So as I said, I'm not quite, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to configure this on the output side. So whether I'm going to make it into a de designated bench supply or not. So what I'm just going to do, so what we'll quickly do, we'll just quickly test the circuit to make sure we're, we've got our, our voltages correctly. So we've got the terminal strip here. We'll put the, the black probe onto the ground. We've got our multimeter up on this side. So the first red wire is, is our five volt feed. So we've got 5.02 volts, which is within, I'm happy with those tolerances. The yellow is the 12 volts. So that's 11.95 volts. Yet again, close enough for what I'm gonna need. And then the orange wire here is the 3.3. So that's 3.48 volts. So what we'll now go and do Obviously on the output side of this, we're gonna to need to fuse it just so we don't, if we get any short circuits, we're not gonna to to fry any of the circuitry here. So what we've got here now, I'm in two thoughts exactly what I'm gonna do with this power supply, whether I'm gonna use it underneath the layout to supply the, the 12, the 3.3 the and the five. Now, so what I haven't done yet, I haven't actually wired what I'm gonna call the output side of this. So if it's gonna go underneath the layout, I'll just use some spade clips and I'll just set up some sort of bus and we'll, we'll go ahead with that. So, so as I said, I'm not quite, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to configure this on the output side. So whether I'm gonna make it into a de designated bench supply or not. So what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna add some jumper cables and I'll just show you how it will work with the, with the fuses. Um, I will go into, the fuses in a sec, because obviously we got some reasonable um, ampage coming out of this, so we need to pick the, the appropriate fuse. So just disregard the colorings at this point in time. Um, they don't mean anything. Um, so that's not actually um, a ground that's coming out of there. So what I'll actually do is, just so I don't confuse you, I will actually color code them correctly. So the yellow represents the the, the, the plus 12 volts and I'll get a what I'll do I'll get a, a negative binding or a ground binding post as well so as you can see I've run out of a little bit of bench space here so I just sort of want to keep the the wires here as well but what we're actually doing here is we've got my Digitech watch I've got here my Digitech multimeter which is set on DC so now what we're going to do is we've got the positive and negative probes. I'm actually just gonna stick them in into the binding post. Now you can see we're getting 11.95, which is for the, the plus 12 volts, which is close enough to what I'm gonna need for what I'm doing for my model train. So just whilst we're on fuses, I'm using that type of fuse holder. So obviously the fuse sits in there and then you connect it via the, the connections here. So to give you some sort of idea what type of fuse I am using, I'm just using these little glass type fuses that go with that type of fuse holder. So what we're looking at using is a few different types of fuses. Now, as I said, the output, so the ampage on, on, the, on this ATX is as follows. So the plus five volts is um, can give out a current of 25 amps, the 3.38 uh, the and the plus 12 is 19 amps. So what I'll look at doing with mine is to sort of the, the rule of thumb here is to stay with your ampage, stay under the rated maximum current for the supply that you can provide. So what I'm going to look at doing, so the plus 12 volts, I'm going to be looking at a, um, a 15 amp fuse. For the 3.3 I'm going to go a 5 amp fuse and the plus five, I'll be looking at 20 amp fuse, just to protect the, the circuit if we do get a, a, a short circuit for whatever reason. So you might be thinking that, yep, I've got an ATX power supply, got one of those at hand, it feels it working, but you don't feel confident at 
pulling all the wires apart and doing what I've done here. So I'll bring up on screen here a, uh, a neat little tool. So you might be thinking, I don't wish to do all these connections and all that and cut the ATX plug off. Um, I just don't feel confident in doing that, but I do have ATX power supplies from old computers lying around. So what you can also buy, and I don't actually have one here, and I'll bring the photo up on screen here, is it's called a ATX DC power supply breakout board module. So you can buy them on eBay and Alibaba and places like that for about 10 to $20, depending on what part of the world and what currency you're buying it in. You get the, the ATX plug, which is what I'm showing on screen there, and it plugs directly into the top of this board and it gives you all these, all these connections already re ready made for you. So you don't have to worry about cutting it for the switches. You don't need to worry about the resistors and everything as the like. So it comes in um, a 20 pin version and also a 24 pin. Obviously mine's a 24 pin plug. So that could be a good little option for someone to try as well. So maybe on a future video, I might give one of those a review just to see how, if they're any easier or more versatile or just see how they perform comparing what I've, um, I've made up here today. So that's the end of the video. So I, you know, this is a bit of a, a fun little build that I've watched a few videos of recent times. Definitely not my idea regarding how to deconstruct this ATX to use it for what we want, but I believe it's going to be quite useful because obviously we, I use a lot of five volt, particularly for Arduino, and obviously twelve volt for my lighting and various other accessories on my layout. Three point three, I'll be able to use on Arduino and a few other bits and bobs. Maybe my IP cameras for my ESP thirty twos. That could be a good option for the 3.3 volts uh, positive. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. As always, I've got three questions that I pose to you. So would, would you, so which way would you go? I've showed you sort of one main way we deconstruct the ATX, or would you rather just a plug and play type scenario with the breakout board that I showed you also? If so, tell me which way you'd like which way you'd consider using it, and also would you use it for a bench top power supply or um, out on the main layout and set up three different buses for the different voltages. And if there's anything I've missed, as always, how could I've made this video better? Any glaring errors that I've made regarding the, the construction of this? So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos, support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.